Hi. Now, going to look at the second part to this question. I'm assuming that you did the first part. Um, if not, then you can always check it out just by looking at the link that is next to this one if you're looking at this video on my website. Now, this was the diagram we had before, and we're now told that the 14 Newton force is suddenly removed. So if we just remove that, the block now decelerates, coming to rest after traveling a further 3.2 meters. And we're asked to calculate the speed of the block at the instant the 14 Newton force was removed. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video, do come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, this would be the diagram essentially that I'd want to draw now, now that that 14 Newton force has been removed. But we need to add to this. I'm just going to put a fact that it's accelerating now, well, it's decelerating, so I can expect this acceleration to be a negative value. We'll just call it a, a meters per second per second. We also know that if we capture this particle through the motion as it moves a distance of 3.2 meters, we'll mark that 3.2 meters in, Say so it starts there when the 14 newtons is taken away, and then it moves 3.2 meters to say a point over here. Okay, so at this point, this is moving with a speed of u, u meters per second, and that's what we've got to find out. And then it slows down because of the friction comes to rest and we'll just put an arrow in here and we'll put that as zero meters per second. Now in order to calculate u, u is going to come from one of the constant acceleration equations, the kind of SUVAT ones that we use, things like v equals u plus at and so on. Now there's going to be a problem because I don't know the acceleration. So I've got to get that acceleration first of all, which requires applying Newton's second law, resolving in two perpendicular directions. And I can see that if I uh, resolve horizontally, I'm going to need to use this R here. And we've got to be careful because this R is not the R that we found in the previous part of the question. When we had the 14 Newton force acting on the particle, this contributed to changing the reaction from what you see now. Now that I've taken it away, this reaction is going to change. So I need to get this normal contact force first of all. And to do that, what I'm going to do is resolve vertically. So resolving vertically, if we can just squeeze it in here, gives us that all of R minus the weight, 28, must equal zero. This is the resultant force in this direction. And because it's in relative equilibrium to the plane in this direction, it must equal zero. And from this, we can see that R is now 28 Newtons. OK, so we've got that. And now what I can do is to resolve horizontally, apply Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, to the right in the direction of motion. So we've got the only force, because these two forces are perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. We only need to consider this force, frictional force, mu r. And it's in the negative sense, that's going to be minus. And we've got mu now, which is 0.577. So I'll put 0.577 in. In fact, if I took the unrounded version from the previous part of the question, that was 3.5 there and so on. Okay, And it's multiplied by the normal reaction, which is now 28. So that's 
minus mu r. And this is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And for this, remember we got the weight here, so the mass would be 28 divided by g. g being 9.8. We'll put that in in a moment. So that's the mass times the acceleration, which is a. Now, if I rearrange this for a, let's put therefore a equals, all I need to do is multiply both sides by g and divide both sides by 28. Well, the two 28s cancel at the moment, okay? I can take that out like so. So what we've got then is that a just simply equals g times minus 0.57735. So if we just put here a equals minus 0.57735 and so on, and we're multiplying that by g, I'm taking g to be 9.8, then the acceleration turns out to be negative, which we would expect because it's decelerating, minus 5.6580 and so on, meters per second per second. Now that I've got that acceleration, I can turn to equations of constant acceleration, my SUVAT-based equations. I'm going to take to the right as positive, and then we've got S for displacement, U, initial velocity, V, final velocity, A, the acceleration, and T, the time. Now, what is the displacement? Well, the displacement in this example is 3.2 meters. So I have that 3.2 in there. U, well U is what we're trying to find. And the final velocity is zero. And we know the acceleration, we've got it up here, minus 5.6580 and so on. As for T, we don't know T, we don't even need it. Because we're looking for an equation that we can use then combining S, U, V and A. And that's got to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And if we rearrange this for u, we've got u squared is going to equal v squared minus 2as. To get u, u will be equal to the root then of v squared minus 2as. And I just need to substitute my values in now. So we've got that u equals the root then of, well, v squared is going to be 0, because v was 0. And so we've got minus 2 multiplied by a, which is a negative number, minus 5.6580, and so on, multiplied by s, which was 3.2. The two negatives give us a positive value here, so we can square root this. And if you do that, you'll find you get 6.017 and so on. And if we give this, say, to three significant figures, it's going to equal 6.02 meters per second. Okay, to two SF, two significant figures. So I hope you've been able to get that. And uh, if not, that you've been able to see how to do it.